In this video, we're going to import a project into GitHub and uh, create a new repository in the process. So what you'll need to do is download this uh, Blackjack zip file, and that's available with the resources section of this video. So uh, there's an option there for you to click on that link to download it and save it somewhere on your computer. In my case, I'm going to be using my desktop. So once you've downloaded uh, the zip file, it is actually quite a small file, you right click it and extract all. And we're just going to extract it to the desktop. All right, I'm gonna close down the Explorer. And now that we've done that, we should have a folder we can see here called Blackjack. And if we go in there, we can see that there's some files in there consistent with a Python project. So the next step is to uh, open this project in IntelliJ. So I'm gonna come over here and click on Open in within IntelliJ. I'm going to navigate to my home folder, which I was already in, and go uh, scroll down here to my desktop. So you would go to whatever the location is for the file that you've downloaded. In my case, it's Blackjack. I'm going to expand this, and just, or actually I could have just double clicked in there anyway. Double clicked in Blackjack. So I've selected that. You can see up here, I've selected the uh, Blackjack folder. I'm going to click on OK, and that should open the project up. Click on Close for the tips of the day, which we don't need. And you can see down the bottom it said, uh, Framework's detected, Python framework is detected. And that's correct because uh, this is actually a Python test project we're going to be using to import into GitHub. Okay, and in terms of the files, this uh, it's actually quite a small project. Here's the Python code. And if you're getting any errors along these lines and wondering what's going on, it could mean that uh, you're, you haven't followed or set up Python correctly within IntelliJ. So do check the videos in this section of the course because I've got videos there showing you how to install everything. But if you still get this when you open the project, Another thing to check is to click on the project name, right click, come down to open module settings, and then come up to project. And here where it says no SDK, we need to select your Python SDK. Now hopefully if you've gone through the Python configuration videos, you did actually choose a Python uh, or set up Python within IntelliJ. So you can see in my case I had that error, but I'm now I've now chosen the Python uh, SDK that I've configured in IntelliJ previously, and I can click on OK. And we should find that uh, those little errors have disappeared. All right, so let's actually just quickly try to run this project just to confirm that it works. And you can see that it's just a simple little blackjack game. Click on new game, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's working okay. All right, so let's now move over to the Git side of things. And uh, what we want to do now is import this project, which currently isn't, isn't uh, under any form of version control, into GitHub. So the way we do that is we come over here to the VCS menu, click on VCS, and come down to Import into Version Control, and choose Share Project on GitHub. And I'll just expand this out a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is create a temporary repository because we're actually going to delete that and recreate it just so I can show you the process of doing that. So the new repository name, that's the uh, repository name on GitHub. Remote name, remember that we used Origin, we talked about that in uh, previous videos. Here's where you'd make it a private repository if you'd paid for that uh, access on GitHub. But I'm gonna leave that off because we're only using the public side. And this is the description of the, uh, the uh, actual repository, so it'll be We'll call it a test Python project for now, because we are going to delete it. All right, so that's the basic details. I can click on Share now. And that started the process of creating a repository, but uh, we're not actually done yet, because remembering that uh, there's a multiple steps involved when we uh, create a repository, we have to actually add the files separately. So that first step has been completed, and I'll just expand this out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. But let's just go over to a browser first, and have a look at what's happened uh, in GitHub. So I'm going to log into GitHub. And I'm actually already logged in. And you can see down here, we've already got this repository that has been created. So I can click on that now. But at this point, it's completely empty. And that's because we haven't uh, added any files using the git to add command. All right, so let's go back to IntelliJ. And uh, now what it's asking us is which files we want to be included in the commit. So you can scrolling down, we can see these are all the various files that form part of this project. So I'm not going to go into any more detail there. I'm just going to leave those as the default. 
and click on I'll leave the default commit message as init commit initial commit and click on OK. And we should find that so this is this is now uploaded completely to GitHub. So I'll just give it a moment to complete and then we'll go back to the browser to make sure it has. And you can see over here we've got a completion message in IntelliJ to say that it's successfully shared the project on GitHub. And in fact, we can actually click this link, which should take us directly to that page. And you can see now that we've got all the files that uh, we uh, had in the IntelliJ project now added to the repository on GitHub. And comparing that to the previous time we went to it, it was obviously empty. So you can see that everything's been completed uh, by IntelliJ with just a few clicks, which is obviously a heck of a lot easier than, than using the command line. All right, so now I mentioned that, that this was a temporary directory, uh, sorry, a temporary repository, and that we're going to delete it. But what I want to do is show you uh, that IntelliJ actually tracks version control projects or projects under version control. So come up here to the file menu and select settings. It'll be preferences on a Mac. And this time click up here to the top under version control. Now notice that uh, we've got this uh, message now, or this uh, directory containing our Git project. Now that, well, that uh, was empty, or would have been empty prior to us starting this. And uh, what that means is IntelliJ is actually tracking uh, that this particular project, this folder effectively, is under version control. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what happens when we delete it. So I'm going to click on OK there. And I'm going to close down uh, the uh, IntelliJ project completely by exiting IntelliJ. And I'm going to close down the browser. And what I'm going to do is delete that entire folder. Remembering that uh, now that we've added it to, uh, or imported it as a repository into GitHub, the .git folder would have been created in this folder. And uh, it's basically being tracked by IntelliJ, as I mentioned, as a Git project, in other words, a project under version control. So we're going to delete that. Then what I'm going to do is extract it again. So this will give us the original file prior to us putting it under version control. So I'm going to click on that. We've now re-extracted it again. And I'm going to start IntelliJ again. And it should uh, go straight into that project. If not, we need to just click it. So it hasn't started it automatically, so I'm just going to click that to open it again. Bearing in mind, we'll probably get a similar message that we got before. So we need to configure the uh, project uh, so that it works under Python. But also we've got this error here, invalid VCS root mapping. The directory project is registered as a git root, but no git repository was found. Now what that is saying is that uh, we've removed a folder, but as far as IntelliJ was concerned, we had it tracked as a folder. So it's now complaining because uh, we've reused that uh, same folder name again, and it's saying the uh, links to the version control system are no longer there. So we can go back into the file and go back into the settings, file menu and click on settings again. Version control. And notice how this has changed and it's now in red. So that's again confirmation that uh, IntelliJ has lost those settings, which is consistent with the fact that we deleted the entire folder and recreated it again. So what I'm going to do is uh, cancel out of that. I'm going to come up here to make sure that uh, we're still configured correctly. So right clicking the project name and coming down to open module settings. Clicking on project, and notice how we've no longer got the uh, project SDK defined again, which is correct because that's what we had to do the first time we loaded this project. I'm going to select my Python installation so that we know that it's a valid project. And what we can do is we can come back up to this file settings menu. We probably should have done that before closing it, and we can just actually remove that. Okay, and that gets rid of that message. Now we're going to go back to the browser, and I want to show you how to delete a project, a repository from within GitHub. And the reason we're going to do that is we're about to import it again. So you, to delete something, you select the project. So in this case, the repository you want to delete is the Blackjack temp one. You come over here to settings, and scroll right down to the bottom, and there's a danger zone, delete this repository. So I'm going to click on delete this repository, and they ask you to type it in exactly, so Blackjack temp, noting that the button didn't uh, enable until I got the exact spelling. If I get one letter wrong, it disables again. Temp, click on I understand the consequences, delete. The project, uh, the repository rather, has been deleted. So that's how you go about deleting a repository. All right, so let's go back to IntelliJ now. 
and we're going to import it this time permanently. And the same process as we've done previously is going to be VCS, import into version control, share project on GitHub. And uh, we're going to call this one, we'll call this one Blackjack app will do. And we'll say, uh, this is the Blackjack game from Tim's learn to program in Python course. Okay, I'm going to click on share. Then we get the same file again, containing all the files that we want to add to the project. And by default, it's uh, pretty well all the files. So we're going to click on initial commit for the Blackjack project. Click on OK. And that should uh, then uh, import this repository into GitHub. Successfully shared, I can click on the link again. And we've got our project back in, this time under the name Blackjack App. All right, so going back to IntelliJ. Now what I want to show you is uh, that uh, not all files are actually imported automatically by IntelliJ. It is uh, quite smart in the sense that there's some temporary files, things like files that are or directories or files that are temporarily created when you build a Python project or any project within IntelliJ or aren't imported into the repository. And there's actually a file, if you open this up, now make sure if this is not selected already, you select Project View. It should be selected by default. You'll notice there's a couple of files here that aren't included. We've got this vcs.xml, which is in red. And I will be explaining the colors in a future video. But this particular file wasn't imported automatically. And this is because IntelliJ sort of said is, uh, has decided that file doesn't need to be in version control. Now we can override that and put that into version control if we want to. And uh, I'll be talking about how to do that in a future video. The point here is that uh, not all files are necessarily added into the project. But again, we'll talk more about that in future videos. Now at this point, uh, you probably are pretty impressed, like I was the first time I used version control in an IDE. Impressed by the fact that uh, it's done everything automatically. But uh, it'd probably be pretty neat if we could figure out uh, you know, what's, what commands did the IntelliJ use to communicate with GitHub, in other words, what Git commands were used. Well, it turns out we can access those by clicking on the View menu, tool, clicking on Tools Windows, Tool Windows, and then choosing Version Control. And this brings up this, uh, opens this little tab down the bottom, and uh, we can actually see firstly unversioned files. This is a file that's not in the repository, and I mentioned that already, that vcs.xml. But if we come across here to the console, we can see as we scroll up, all the commands that were used by IntelliJ to uh, work with this repository and to upload it. So you can see that uh, it initialized an empty git repository, and that's obviously in this folder in the .git subdirectory, which is normal, we have been saw that before when we're working with command lines. But it's also added these other commands here and added all the different files independently to the project. And then scrolling down, notice that we've got this warning, LF will be replaced by CRLF. Now what that means is that uh, this project was originally created on a Mac for my Python course, because I do a lot of my recordings on a Mac. And because this is the Windows machine that I'm doing this recording on, the file type has changed from a line feed to a carriage return line feed. And the point is that uh, Git's done that for us automatically. But scrolling down, we can also see the other commands as well. We can see the fact that was the committer was Tim Bachalka. So it's read those details from the global configuration file where we set up the name and the email address. And you can see there it's uh, giving some hints about uh, accessing that. We've talked about the global uh, configuration file before. But it's also showing us the various modes for each file and the fact that 233 files were changed, 899 insertions. Scrolling right down to the end, We've got the standard uh, completion thing that we normally saw from the command line, compressing objects, remembering that it compresses objects to make the uploads uh, files smaller. It's written the projects out, the uh, objects out rather, and uh, we finally get uh, the total down the bottom, and then a link to the actual remote repository on GitHub. So you can see it's not really magic at all, it's using just the git commands that we've used from a command line, but it's invoking and calling those automatically behind the scenes but it is giving us the best of both worlds because we can still access and see the history via this uh, console log of uh, the various commands that have been used.
All right, so I'm going to finish the video here. In the next in the next video, we'll have a bit more of a play around with uh, repositories, and we might leave this version control uh, tab open so that we can see the commands as they've been uh, executed in real time. So I'll see you in the next video.